Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Masks, a new generation on Charisma to AC. We're back after a little, what, a month-long hiatus? It's been, it's been a little while. Things got yeah, in the way. Yeah, so, Yeah. Here we are. And I am joined today by everyone. Uh, so, hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. hi. My name is not everyone. My name is Legion. <laughs> My name's Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Hi, though. <laughs> All right, yes. all right. So, so okay. Yeah, it's it's definitely been a while. So anyway, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, and for you, dear viewing audience, uh, if this is your first time watching Masks, uh, on on Christmas Tracy, what are you doing? Go back and watch the other sessions first. Like major spoiler territory. What are you doing? Abort, abort. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, for those of you who have been uh, who have been caught up to everything, those of you who know what you're heading into, I am of course Daniel. I will be your host and the GM for this session, and. Uh, we're just going to be picking up where we left off, but before we do that, before we actually start play, uh, let's have let's have some of these delightful fellows remind us ex uh, what exactly was happening last time, um, and uh, we'll talk about um, we'll talk about uh, what's up with the, your characters, what's up with your conditions, and what we'll be doing. Giant sky tentacles. Yeah, yeah the world is ending. Up what I remember. Oh, massive black spike. Are you okay? Yeah, Are you okay? Can you can you make it through the lag? Are you fine? Annie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, are you okay Annie? <laughs> the sound of a window. She was struck by a crescendo. Yep. Okay. So okay. <laughs> it seems like we have some a bit of technical difficulty from from poor AJ. Let's, let's, da, da, wait, da, 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 let's wait for her to get back in. But in the meantime, I guess we can do a quick rundown of your conditions um, for all of you respectively. Oh, there she is. That was easy and peasy. Hello. Are you back? Is everything as it should be? No, everything isn't as it should be. It's it's but slowing down. That's good. okay. Let's let's be quick about it then. Uh, so, uh, what happened last time, uh, Eeny Meeny Miny Rasmus? <laughs> Giant sky tentacle. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it it does really like that. That's the that's, end. That's, that's, that's the done. summary. That's fine. <laughs> I, I think there was something about I. I think I I took a nightshade to to my sacred grove, but I don't remember if that was last time or the time before that. That's fine. I think then it was I'll, last time. I'll I'll, uh, I'll grab the the uh, the responsibility of recapping then, as uh, <laughs> as it has been a while. So last time you can't we trust all, us. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I trust you. I trust you to have fun on this show. That's a mistake. Do not trust <laughs> Look, okay, no GM ever existed that was beyond mistakes, right? It's, it's not a thing. I mean, praise Gygax and all that, but no, not a thing. So, uh, last time you all woke up in uh, in cells. Uh, you woke That up was after... one session? Yeah. Wow. Uh, after having been captured uh, in, in the aftermath of you... Uh, New King Downtown. Um, you woke up in in the care of uh, the Exemplars, a superhero group uh, that is uh, that has a rock star status in in Helsinki City. Uh, you uh, had a, a discussion with a representative of the government agency uh, Aegis, and uh, after that, you talked to some members of the Exemplars, um, who uh, who. Like were lame grown ups who told you that you needed to control your powers and other unimportant bullshit. Um, but uh, what they told you uh, struck home with um, struck home. Um, traffic. Someone's going fast. <laughs> sonic. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> don't. Just a sudden sonic says cuts over. Um, all right. So, uh, but yeah, you you were. Uh, you talked to some members of the Exemplars um, who convinced uh, Starlight that she should stay and uh, get her powers under control uh, because she was a danger to the world around her, which of course placed, played into Starlight's insecurities. There is some noise going on in the background of you, AJ. Are you wearing a headset? 
Yeah, I am. Right. So I don't understand why there is, but I can see that the connected to conversation thingy is turning red all the time, and I keep getting lag spikes through this this thing. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it will be a great and glorious day, like a day worth noting, and maybe making a marble statue signifying that day when the day <laughs> finally arrives that that there are no tech issues at all to be experienced in any shape or form. Um, well, if that ever happens, we will know the world is ending. <laughs> Very true. Very true indeed. I mean, one, one would hope, one would hope that if that ever happened, that was like a signifier that things were gonna be okay from then on. But I get what you're saying. It's a lack of technical issue should be a horseman of the apocalypse. Yeah. They'll oh, be like, everything has run so smoothly. What's going on? When are we gonna die? Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, um, Starlight deciding to to stay behind with the exemplars um, was a decision uh, was a decision she made. While the rest of you uh, also went like each to their own. Um, we had a a look at um, we had a look at uh, Vigil uh, as he. Um, as he uh, got a new, uh, he got a new um, sanctuary. He got a sanctuary from uh, one of your advances. Yep. Um, and you, Fun. you basically like practiced because your mom was giving you shit for not being good enough. Yep. Um, and uh, we had a sequence of uh, um, of nightshade and uh, white sparrow. Mm -hmm. chilling and hanging out and like bonding uh by entering yes. uh, sparrow's uh sparrow's safe space yes um, and then it was kind of not so safe but luckily i'm very adept at lying <laughs> yes uh, true there was a a brief <clears throat> flash of something wicked within um Some i think I like th this way comes i think i spent roughly 45 percent of that whole scene just lying <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true, I remember. True. You remember back when I totally did not die? Yeah, this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, that that's nothing. Nothing to be worried about. <laughs> I'm not dying, I'm just choking. Please help. Yeah. <laughs> Please send help. All right, so that so was fun. That's definitely a thing that happened, and that was uh, that scene happened as a result of um, of Nightshade uh, postponing his meeting with his parents after having been <laughs> gone for a couple of days. Now, naturally, yeah, we uh, we accept that as a as a result of this like uh, of of some time passing last session uh, that you did indeed get a like major major earful from your parents, like that. You, yeah, I think whenever you returned, like. The earth was shaking and the clouds <laughs> abandoned the skies um, for, for fear of their safety. Um, was that when I was that when I shifted him, or was that at the end of the session? I think it was in the session. Yeah, that was at the end of the session, wasn't it? I think it was. I don't remember. I just remember the end of the session being us being sent after our tentacle. That is true. That happened. Yeah. So that. that and you that's have. Way, um... You have no idea how close I were to say testicle, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like formless, formless reddish blobs descending from the sky. You never truly know until you've seen all of it. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I mean, let's let's not let's not draw any hasty conclusions here. Um, but yeah, so. Uh... So basically, someone is teabagging the earth. That is what you're saying. Maybe. I mean, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying it's not necessarily what's not happening. True, true. Uh, but yeah, some time passed, and uh, just as things seemed like they were calming down, of course, as they have a tendency to seem to, uh, to, seem to do, uh, an alarm went off in Exemplar headquarters, uh, and uh, at the same time, you at, the, at your school at Halcyon City High, uh, beheld as the sky tore itself open, and we as the readers of the comics were of course aware of uh, the fact that this was caused by someone tampering with the super tech that you have been uh, that you've been encountering over the past couple of sessions. 
Um, you mean the stuff that we didn't stop? Yeah, the the, the stuff that you <laughs> the stuff that got stolen despite you stopping the bank robbers, then the stuff that was made away with, uh, and the the whole crystal business. Uh, but yeah, a the, a rift in the sky tore itself open, and a giant time monster has descended upon your school, uh, just pouring through the ether. And uh, as as luck would have it, uh, it is. I don't remember what I called. It. I think I called it like a level four event or something like that. Um, which basically, mean, which basically like that. means that as far as people are concerned, if this is not curtailed, this will rip open space time and destroy the world. So everyone was invited. Yeah. So uh, we we ended on on you guys uh, joining up. Uh, you being, of course, Hell City Defenders, uh, joining up with uh, three members of the new exemplars um, and three members of the exemplars. Uh, I think it was uh, it was Doctor Sheila Supreme, uh, Saw, and Captain Courage. And the three uh, new exemplars were um, uh, Whisper, Watchdog, and Kid Courage. Yep. Um, and then there was also a surprise appearance by the vigil, who had come to stop this, uh, who had come to stop this, and and lend what aid they could. Yeah. So I that's... remember I was driven there by the place I were in. Yes, we got our last member back. Yeah. Uh, Starlight uh, uh, came to to the scene of the events with uh, with the exemplars. Um, mm -hmm. have, after having spent a week or so uh, not really getting a firmer grip on her powers. And uh, now here you are, uh, back with your friends, helping to, to prevent a giant time blob from eating your school. <coughs> yeah. We should let have it. No, then it will never be recess. <laughs> True. Isn't that, we need uh, that bell. We need to play Alice Cooper music in the background of this episode. <laughs> It'll just always be one minute to recess. And we just stare longingly at the watch and it'll never, ever, ever tick. It'll forever be stuck at 11.59. Yep. <laughs> All right. We can't have that. So let's let's start at the top of these characters then. Uh, let's let's get reacquainted with our with our intrepid heroes. Uh, starting at the top, uh, Finn, why don't you briefly reintroduce us to your character? Tell us what uh, what conditions you have marked and uh, what your relationships are. Hmm. So Finn, uh, in short, he's the newest, well, newest, the the youngest generation of the Vigil, a ancient organization descending from. Well, from Arturian descent, uh, created to protect it, protect the world against like interdimensional entities. And he, his relationships were ah, uh, uh, you once got caught doing something that shames your legacy with Starlight, and that we established that was when we tried to when I tried to sneak her into one of the sacred pools of power. Hi, Sonic. Uh, <laughs> to say sacred pools of power and um, before, well, to help her with her condition um, or to control her powers, whatever, and then to help. And, um, and they were discovered. He told Starlight to run and he was uh, well punished for it. That is true. That was real shameful. Uh, and the other one was you trust Nightshade and told them important secret of, secret of your legacy, and that we established the uh, they didn't trust each other at, the, at, at first, but they kind of um, became more buddy buddy with uh, uh, with Nightshade, and yeah. uh, and the secret of my legacy is that uh, well, I told him about the 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 grand betrayer the uh Soren Soren the shamed yes who, who <laughs> betrayed your order for whatever yeah. for whatever violent villainous reasons uh such such a a oath breaker must keep yes 
Uh, that, that he did. And I have only one condition this time instead of like four last time. <laughs> uh, and it's just, I'm just hopeless. Just, just hopeless. <laughs> just hopeless. Just it's giving up it's hope. Not, not, a yes. big, not a big deal. I'm just hopeless. It's, it's just, much, yeah. <laughs> things are much better than they were last time. I've just given up. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> yeah. it's easier. And, and, just give up. And, 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 and all in all, I am I am I am the highest level character because I fail every time at everything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This like, is if, true. If you would have forgotten this from watching the the former episodes and just it's just uh, you're just getting reacquainted with the game. Brain is failing this a lot. Like yes. he, is, he yeah. is he is the Lord of Misses. Just, yes. just, We're just, all just, completely just, envious. Yeah, just to put it, put it in numbers, every like most people just got their first uh, first advancement. I am halfway to third. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't gotten my first potential yet. No, you're too good. <laughs> I I'm I'm missing. Well, I'm I'm missing two. I'm uh, no, I'm missing one. I can see. I was looking at the wrong sheet. Mm. I'm I'm missing one for my first advancement. Seriously. <laughs> nice. Well, you sh you you uh, would uh, you'd be uh, do well to like ruminate a bit on on what moves you would like to pick up uh, when you when you get enough potential, uh, because if I don't misremember this, and ladies and gentlemen, it's been a month since last we played, so if I'm misremembering stuff, that's why I I let's just just strap in for me not remembering the rules. Um, <laughs> But I do, th I do seem to remember that once you've marked enough uh, potential, you just get your move right then and there. So you could level up on the spot. Yeah, uh, um, I just have to find the playbooks again. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all, all that is like for, for if you miss during this session, uh, or if you do something that causes you to mark potential. Uh, Nightshade, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, and tell us about your relationships and your conditions. Uh, Nightshade is the Jinx. He, so far, I've leveled up once. Our, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, White Sparrow's been a big influence on him. He's a, a big savior now. That's true, you oh, changed your I, I, I switched my mask. Mm-hmm. Very and nice. Do you have an idea of how that will be, like, how, how that will be exemplified in, in-game? Like, how we will see that? in the comic book medium or should i throw something at you at the start of the of the session um uh, i really haven't thought of how it's going to be reflected yet okay. so yeah if you want to throw something that's that's good you, you throw feel, a poodle at him you feel free to like think up something more meaningful on long term okay. on your own but i i will do something at the beginning of the session then to like kind of to kind of like uh punch through that idea all right and this time i have no conditions marked Nice. Uh, my relationships. <laughs> uh, White Sparrow knew me from my civilian life first, so she knew me before I became a superhero. Yeah. And I think we established that we were uh, best friends growing up, so we both know each other. That's right. You live, like, on the same street. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I refused to tell Vigil my secret identity when, we f when he first asked. Uh, that was because... Nightshade didn't want the publicity. He was afraid to uh, mingle his real identity with uh, other superheroes. Yeah. But like Vigil said, we got over that. Also, like you're like you got bad, you got like a bad chi from him, right? It was like, yeah. why are you so in tune with this shit? You're right. <laughs> yeah. uh, White Sparrow uh, wants to kiss me before she dies. <gasps> Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you're not supposed to tell after the kiss, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Before is okay. Yeah, you don't kiss and tell. And then uh, Starlight hangs out with me to blow off steam. Cool. Uh, so, Starlight, tell us about yourself, tell us about uh, your conditions, and tell us about your relationships. Well, Starlight the Nova currently has four conditions. <laughs> She's afraid, she's angry, she's guilty, she's not insecure, but she is hopeless. <laughs> yeah, hopeless club. Yeah, hopeless club. Um, her labels have gotten kind of one-sided. 
She has three in Freak and three in Danger. I remember that. That's a thing that happened. <laughs> That's a thing that happened because people kept telling her she was fucking dangerous. Yeah, well, you... yeah. She is now. Uh... Self fulfilling prophecies and all that. Yeah. <laughs> She has cosmic energies, and she hangs out with Nightshade. Mm. She wants her sparrow, so she confided in her. And Nightshade has influence over her. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Finn tried to help him, or help her, and he fucked up. But he tried. He mm. tried. He, he tried. Good Although he's, he's, he's getting into trouble a lot for our sake. So, uh, well, so this, just... This, just because you said like you have four conditions, this best mentioning for all of you in case you don't remember. Uh, there are a couple of handouts out in the journal. If you scroll down to the one called Moves Part 2, uh, yeah. there is a subheader called Clearing Conditions that tells you how your characters uh, can overreact to, to, get, to blow off enough steam to clear conditions. Course, I, I this, have is, a, this is just you clearing I, conditions on your own. You can also like have your teammates <laughs> use comforting moves and so on. I, I have been looking at it good, good. for some strange reason, because if she also gets insecure, <laughs> then poof, she freaks. Uh, that's not good for an over. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, last time uh, last time you went overboard, things went went really overboard. <laughs> when you fail, you south. fail colossally. Yeah, I think that's a good thing that I'm not failing that much. Even though I would love some more potential, I think killing the world for it wouldn't be worth it. I mean, I mean that's that's up for debate, right? I mean, on one hand, destroy the planet, but on the other hand, that potential though. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if if I do it, I can get a move from another playbook. I can get. Uh, I'll look three new flares just like that. You know what? <laughs> I imagine you being like, oh, I destroyed the world. I'm gonna take the move from the outsider playbook that gives me a spaceship and I'm leaving. This <laughs> yeah, I'm peacing out. <laughs> Something Peace. like that. Peace. Peace. And then leave. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Anyway. Alright, so last but not least. Uh, White Sparrow. Who? Tell, tell us, White Sparrow. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, tell us about your relationships and tell us about your conditions. All right. So, I mean, White Sparrow is the doomed. And I can see I can't actually scroll while holding down my push to talk button. So that's fun. Um, she has only one condition. She is angry and I don't remember why. That's a good and... <laughs> Um, I I mean I guess that's it's it's better than having four. And for relationships, um, Starlight knows about her doom and the fact that she's kind of uh, an after image of a dead person, but can potentially become real again, and that she can't talk about it. She, as as mentioned before, she would love to kiss Nightshade before her doom comes. <laughs> yeah, if she doesn't hurry up about beating her nemesis, she'll have to hurry up kissing him at least. <laughs> yep. And she knew Nightshade before before he done the mask, as has also been covered. And she managed to to switch his his mask around to Savior, which mm -hmm. incidentally also is the only stat that she doesn't have zero in. She has three Savior and zero in everything else. Very nice. Yeah, what do I have in Savior? I have minus one. <laughs> yeah, you dangerous freak, you. <laughs> and minus two in mundane. I mean that that is that is the news the news header for your character is dangerous freak. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So uh, actually, um. So White Sparrow, before we we skip along from you, uh, last session you uh, you unlocked a new move. I did indeed. And uh, would you tell us a little bit about that move? I actually had um a, a plan, some plans for a small scene yeah. for when uh so because basically I chose the 
Go Lucky, I think it's called, from the Beacon, where you have a pet that can aid you in certain actions. But uh, I had some plans for a scene making it. Yeah, so uh, my question is, uh, if you would prefer to, to run that scene, um, like, dude, is, is the scene you imagine, is that a scene that, uh, that like, a kind of an interlude that would happen during this current conflict? Or would it be something for once everything has settled? I would think it best to do once everything has settled. Okay, so you're you're okay with it maybe maybe being late in the session or not? The yes, session? that's totally fine. I'd rather it be done um, right rather than hurried. I'm along. okay with like I'm okay with that. I I could I could see like. Um, like on on one hand, I want like uh, on one hand, I'm inclined to say like no, like why does it happen right now? What like what is this like new move we see happening mid fight? Um, but on the other hand, I'm perfectly okay with it going the other way. Uh, I'm I'm fine with you playing it by by whatever you I, plan. I, I could totally tweak it to happen mid fight as well. That's not an issue. Um, let's, let's go with it like the way you imagined. I'm fine with it. So. Uh, that is that is all the stuff I think. Is there something we should we should address before we start playing? The world is ending. Run! It is indeed. <laughs> um, did Vigil say defenders deploy last time, or do we need to have him <laughs> say it this time? I mean, I think I think we'll double up on that, right? Because of course the last book ended with it, but this book is definitely also going to start with it. Of course, of course. We all have that one panel last week thing where it just says defenders deploy and you see all the tentacles. <laughs> Damn right. I think that's right. Actually I think I think what it is is I think it's like a I think it's a triple set uh, set of panels. Uh, so when we we take down the this issue uh, the fourth issue of Halcyon City Defenders uh, and we open to like the first page and the first page is um the first page is like a sky view of Halcyon City. Um, and in the background, there is this tear in the sky. Like, it looks small from a distance because we're very far out in this otherwise enormous metropolis. Um, but there's, like, pinkish lightning shooting out of it. And these, like, red tendrils it ascend descending from the sky into somewhere beyond the, the line of skyscrapers. It's the cootie monster. Exactly. <laughs> and, um, Cooties, yeah. <laughs> we see, uh, we see like two two images. We see, um, we see the vigil. Uh, we see basically like uh, seven members of the. How many people are in the vigil? Nine, like nine nine members of the vigil in Halcyon or something like that. Uh, as many as we need them to be, really. All right, let's. Uh, we we know, we know three of them by three four of them by name, but the rest yeah. is just you know. Let's let's How say let's say nine because I like the yeah. like nine as a number. Uh, so we see like uh, we see all, all the people like all the members of the vigil that we have seen on camera. We see like we see Kimball, old old grumpy pants Kimball. Uh, we see your mother Pala. We see Faust, and we see like a couple of other dudes. And all we of... have mentioned the 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 the, the protege, the the yeah. young one that is that being trained. The young one we don't see. Uh, uh, yeah, I not not deployed in the field yet. They they haven't even been shaped yet. I still want Kimball to be on the battlefield, but in like a in like kind of the Papa Mobile. Yeah, <laughs> like, but I think so. So what we see, version of Papa Mobile. We see like all of them in in what is it's drawn like a fisheye lens would capture it through a camera, and it's like a line of uh, like it's it's a, a crescent formation of of vigil. Uh, all like looking towards the like towards the direction of the viewer, uh, with like glowing golden shields up and and uh, pikes out like in a kind of like half schlick torn formation. Nice. Um, all of, and in unison they're shouting Halcyon. Um, then we have a, a second picture of uh, of uh, the three exemplars uh, joined by their respective sidekicks. So the exemplars and the young exemplars deploying. Um, and, and, uh, I think they, I don't know what the exemplars deployment phrase is. Uh, I, I guess for now we'll just have them like, say something like, uh, like exterminate. <laughs> no, not exemplars. <laughs> exterminate. Delete. Delete. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
just about to say, too late. <laughs> and the, in some, somewhere, somewhere on the rooftop in the background, there's a blue police box. Um, <laughs> Let's find the doctor. Screw the rest. It all, it all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this is time focused. Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it, we have like the, the exemplars deploying, uh, and then we have like the the big, hyper detailed uh, picture of of you guys engaging one of the other t tentacles that have descended from the sky, which is basically like this almost autonomous creepy entity. And of course, we have the 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 phrase the defenders deploy, and we'll basically just jump right into the action. Um, the sky above you is roiling with clouds lit by purple lightning shooting from a giant tear in reality, uh, reddish tendrils of like weird Lovecraftian forms and like with bony protrusions and tiny mouths snapping with with like long uh, um, like prehensile tongue slashing around. Uh, are like have descended upon and is consuming your school bit by bit as it kind of goops over it and takes bites out of it simultaneously. Uh, the other tendrils that have descended from the sky are like lodged in a nearby building and somewhere beyond the school grounds. Uh, and all of the three teams that are present on the scene are basically taking one tendril each uh, while also shouting and trying to keep in communication. So, uh, as we see you deploy, in front of you, we have this, uh, this like, creature from beyond time and space uh, that has so far proven very resistant to your attacks. Uh, it is uh, con continuing its assault on your school grounds, uh, basically unhindered so far. And although the, the students are evacuating, they're also being teenagers about it, uh, especially teenagers in a superhero pop culture superhero city which means they're like running and stopping and turning and looking and pointing and like and being amazed at how cool everything is and then being very scared about how, how every, like how scary everything is and then running but then stopping again and having another look right they're being that kind of evacuees basically they are stopping like idiots to take a fucking selfie exactly yes there yeah. are in fact like selfies uh, going on they they're stopping uh, at just the wrong place at just the wrong time. Exactly. So to take a fucking selfie and say, ah! Yeah. So your situation <laughs> is that that the building itself is under is under attack, but unfortunately, so by extension, are the people still inside? <laughs> so as this, as this happens, let's let's start the session out as we do uh, with putting another team in your pool. So we bump the team pool up to four. Um, and as you are entering battle against an enemy uh, as a team presently, uh, let's let's ask all those questions. Okay. Um, let's see what that is. Uh, it is uh, yeah. Does uh, who is the leader of this team? Vigil. Vigil. Do you agree, Starlight? Vigil is Finn, right? Yeah. 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 yeah okay then. Yes. All right. Uh, I forgot for a second. I was looking over Vigil. Vigil, is that Nightshade? No, that's Nightshade. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Vigil, do you have influence over every teammate? I think I do. I I acquired I acquired the last one, the last yeah. session. Yeah, I do. Give it. Okay, cool. So uh, let's see. Uh, does everyone here have the same purpose? What is your respective purposes? Vigil, why are you here? Why are you fighting? Well, to stop, stop, stop the creatures, stop the end of the world. All right, you're here to stop the end of the world. Um, uh, uh, Nightshade, why are you here? Uh, to kill giant sky tentacles. Okay, to kill giant sky tentacles. Starlight, why are you here? <laughs> to make sure the world isn't ripped apart. Cool, saving the world. And White Sparrow, why are you here? To protect Beach, I mean Halshan City, from the end of the world. All right, so I guess it all comes down to protecting the planet. Let's <laughs> save it from the yes. giant sky testicles that's trying to goop over and teabag us. You did it. Today, today we are cancelling the apocalypse. <laughs> Starlight is about to facilitate the world's largest vasectomy. Yosh. All right. I'm going to so. cut them off at the root. 
Uh, does any member of this team mistrust Vigil? No. All right. Uh, are you ill prepared or off balance? You are kind. <laughs> you are kind no, of ill prepared. No. Yes. <laughs> no, we are so prepared, and none of us is out of balance. All right. Well, actually, let's... it was part of our master plan to have this happen. That's why we <laughs> let them get all the things they wanted. I see. Of course, you are actually up to eight team for this fight. Nice. Let's see how fast we can spend that. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, you can you can spend team both to help each other and uh, to act selfishly. Yeah, Sparrow. Yeah. So, um, what have I done? As we see you deploy, uh, <laughs> and as we we see uh, we see you like uh, shout, defenders deploy. Uh, I think uh, I will leave it to you, like to you guys, to tell me who is the first into the fray. Huh? Who is the very first we see take action? As we see like this this dynamic picture of all of you like jumping forth, like engaging the creature. But who who is like the first in contact? I'll do it. Alright, so night shade. She'll do it. You uh, what uh, what do you do? Like the, the giant sky monster is is tearing up the school. Uh you can't really define like what like does it have a head? Is is yeah. there is there an important part of this thing? But it is scoopy and destroy. Uh, so what what are you what are you gonna do in this moment? Destroy. You... Yeah, I I imagine like as we're all like leaping forward, I just throw down a blanket of uh, toxic gas to try and envelop the closest part of it. All right. So uh, last time, uh, and I'm just to tell you this so you remember, last time you got into contact with the creature and tried to poison it. Uh, uh -huh. And it started. Uh, it started belching poison gas in response. Oh shit! Yeah, I forgot about. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm not mistaken, one of you were about to be eaten by the tentacle yeah, because you me. landed on it too. <laughs> so with with that in mind, I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'm gonna give you the option to reconsider, but I won't tell yeah, you that you're not allowed. To. Let's reconsider that. So it is, um, it is four weeks ago. It's, it's yeah. A... Are there any? Is there any uh, like bystanders that are in immediate danger of being attacked by this thing? Not right now. Um, the the most immediate danger part is if someone aren't like if there's still someone inside when the roof comes down. If the roof uh -huh. comes down, then there's an issue. Okay. Well, I not guess... they might just be eaten, and that's not <laughs> good either. Seeing as I'm kind of. Uh, ineffective against it and like I provided a weapon I'm going to jump off the roof and start running inside and trying to evacuate people out of the building cool so we see like the, the shot of you guys like approaching the monster and then we have a side shot of you diving low and ex like exploding through a window on the first floor of the school yep uh, yeah and as you emerge into like a, a school hallway on, on the first floor of the school uh then we, we see like you, you look down the hall and you see like students evacuating like running towards the fire escapes and so on uh, but like reddish tentacles have like emerged from the air ducts and are like blindly grasping for people mm -hmm. yeah I'm definitely going to try and uh, cut those tendrils off to make sure that they don't uh, grab anyone as they're running by right so you, you want to facilitate a, a safe escape yep the people inside that's cool uh, I I know what you're doing now. Um, what is uh, what do we see Finn doing? Finn actually, well, take a knee, uh, look at this, look at the all this like look the like tentacle up and down, look at all, all the surroundings, all the uh, you know, he will just well assess the situation. <laughs> Hey! He's yeah. using the brain. Someone actually finally did that. Yeah. No, I did it. I did it. I did it last time. I did it last time. <laughs> oh right, right, you did. You actually did. It's just like, and, I actually, and I actually surprisingly succeeded at it. Yeah. Oh, so someone is assessing the situation. Uh, that actually sounds like a cool first thing. We should probably start doing that. Give us a uh, <laughs> give me a role plus superior as you do that. Just flat to these. Yes! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, delightful. Oh, Starting strong! <laughs> why, um, 
Why is our leader the one who, you know, misses? <laughs> that, that's sad. I'm She's clearly so the strong. most experienced one. You're the most experienced one at missing, but I'm fair. still... One of you can assist me, it's only one... Uh, no, sorry, two points I need. <laughs> that's true, oh, you, you, have the, you. you have the capacity for, for throwing in with two teams to get this up to a, uh, a hit. Yeah, you know what? I'm it's gonna... a real shame when when this assessing thing doesn't work. So I'm up for helping if we can get another. Same. Cool. Woo! I so... I think the way um, I think the way uh, Sparrow no Starlight is helping is uh, flying with him, so he has a better look at the situation. Nice. And Sparrow will point out potential dangers. So yeah, all... she's good at that. She's good at defending. So yeah. although we don't know this yet, as as the viewing, uh, as as the people reading the comic, um, we we don't know that Nightshade has had his like embodiment changed from danger to uh, to savior, um, and like and that will later on be like embodied in his costume. Um, but though we don't know this, though, though we don't know of this change of heart for for um, for Nightshade. Like, the first thing we see is, like, you guys assessing the threat and Nightshade diving for the civilians, right? So, so uh, in the sense, like, there's a kind of thematic uh, hook that will lead into that. And as he does that, we have, like, a focus on the three of you uh, remaining outside, beholding the, the giant sky beastie. Um, and you throw in two, uh, two teams, so we'll, we'll dunk your team down to six. And uh, now you have seven for your, uh, for your assessment. Mm -hmm. Uh, which means that you can ask me one of the questions from the list of questions. <sighs> That's under moves one, right? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, what here can I use to neutralize the, tent the, tent the tentacle? Very cool. So, If you throw starlight into it, I will be mad. <laughs> This is this, this totally ties into like this is this has everything to do with the fact that you're getting help, uh, because we established last time that Starlight you have a uh, you have an interest for uh, for like physics like you were uh, you uh, have uh, like you're re you're you're nerd out sometimes you read like physics magazines and so on. Yeah, uh, you were familiar with like a a super scientist from a, a foreign nation uh, last session. Gosh. And as you're like looking around, uh, you uh, you're like basically spitballing. We see you like talk shop, like talk ideas, right? Like, what do we do? How do we stop it? It's like not res it. It seems to like be absorbing our powers, um, and uh, you, um, uh, White Sparrow, you uh, you know like you can feel from this creature a kind of psychic projection. Like this this creature is definitely not just flesh and bone. Uh, there is some, oh. there's something more to this creature, as like maybe you assume that based on the fact that it's like a time beastie from the void, but there is definitely something beyond the mundane to it. Um, and you're like assessing the strength of its psychic presence, um, Finn. You got like you are formulating like how strong is it, how fast is it moving, how quick is its response to whenever we blast it with something. And uh, Starlight, you notice that uh, the the energy buildup in the sky seems to crackle particularly uh, particularly intensely around the the uh, the area of uh, the area where the the tentacle tentacles are emerging. Right, like there is this giant tear in the sky, but the energy buildup is largest where the creature passes through the veil. Yeah, and in realizing this, um, your eyes are like inevitably drawn to, to you're drawn to the same conclusion that it, the energy that emerges from its realm is probably the best tool to hurt it and almost in unison your eyes are drawn to like a nearby skyscraper on top of which is a giant lightning rod <laughs> well then nobody can no none of us can control the weather no Foiled again. No, but I do control cosmic energies. Yeah, you might be able to like manipulate the stream, like the the stream of energy from from the other side of this thing, and 
and draw it towards some kind of like uh, some kind of battery or or relay. But whether or not that's a thing you can do, I mean, you've definitely never tried it before. But who knows? This I is almost the killed the world. I have an idea. I have an idea. Oh. <laughs> Starlight. An idea. Starlight. Put put me on put me on that tower when the when the lightning rod is, and you go up there and ch channel the energy and shoot it straight at me. You get a look saying, "Are you trying to kill yourself?" No. I'll keep the tentacles away then. All right. I. Try to get him to the tower with the lightning rod. As if in response to like what you're doing, the tendril, though fixated on, on eating the school, part of it kind of breaks off. As if by cell, cell division, it kind of slurps into another uh, tentacle. And it starts Ew. like moving after you through the air, like as, as if of its own intelligence. And like small bone protrusions start appearing through the side of it, and tiny mouths start ah, opening on the side. As it, like, mouth is... blindly snakes <laughs> exactly. air after you. Ew! 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 Uh, ew, I'll, ew, I'll, ew! Like when I'm carried, I'm, I'm carried. I'll, I'll try to just generate like a shield behind us. Like, like yeah. So yeah, you, you're a blood, you're you're like being carried away, and unbeknownst to like the two of you, this thing happens, and you're about to get blindsided by it. But however. Uh, White Sparrow has your back. Yeah, I do. What do you do? Well, this thing is nasty and tentacly, so I think we answer that with nice tentacles made of giant vines of some sort of woody texture. You, you, that, of course, like, of course, of course, that's what you do. Uh, you you definitely like immediately your eyes are drawn to like a huge tree standing like out on the court of of the school grounds. Yes. That is an obvious medium. Medium. Yes, for the thing you wanted to do. I'm confused. Same so am I. You wanted to uh, you wanted to evoke like giant tentacles to, uh, of of woodsy stuff to to, uh, to well yes but back. as you remember Sparrow makes psychic pro projections made either out of kind of animal stuff or plant stuff so she's just gonna make them yes exactly but I suppose I could use the tree as an anchor and take from that um, the 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 concept of the tree and expand on that so I'll do that. So, so I'm, I use the tree as a medium, um, and since I channel positive emotion most of the time, why not use the lingering psychic energies of all the couples who've cut their names into the tree and been super happy and in love? Aww. You're, a, you're adorable. Take plus one to this move. <laughs> Aww. Aww. The tree burns. All those guys wanting to get laid. Aww. Love will protect you. So much teenage. Um, yeah, absolutely. Got them curvers there. That was so, so, I so by the power a... of, by the power of the kissing tree, uh, you take plus <clears throat> one to your uh, to your attempt to defend your your compatriots. Oh wow! Wow! <laughs> Holy cow! Wow! Get wrecked! <laughs> Holy hell! <laughs> Okay. Now I just now I just imagine it going slap slap. No, go away. Slap slap. <laughs> the tentacle um, actually kiss. The love tree definitely wants to preserve the memories of the school and these nice pupils of the school. Clearly. Yeah, absolutely. We see like the the giant uh, like the giant ghostly echo of the tree as it grows proportionally in size and like starts wrestling with the tentacle. Um and and of course like all over it, like a, a dozen tattoos, like a billion cutie marks, uh, lights up different <laughs> hearts with J plus M and H plus A and so on, like all over it, shining like a, a million medallions. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yes, you, definitely. You, you succeed, you hit, you definitely hit. So, uh, so you keep them safe and you choose one. You know, being over 
come with this just positive emotion stored in the tree. I think I will clear my angry condition. Nice. You uh, you 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 bathe in good vibes. Yeah, exactly. You you you're no longer angry. Good stuff. No, if anything, I'm a little bit lovesick or something. So yeah, right see, now uh, you are. It's like, oh, come here, Nightshade. <laughs> so we see as as uh, Nightshade and uh, not as Nightshade as um, as Starlight and uh, and Finn like make for the oh. top of the nearby building. Uh, you you get uh, uh, you you don't get way get waylaid by the giant tentacle thing uh, as the giant ghost tree emerges and starts beating it down with the power of love. Like uh, and we we, we we actively try to avoid the love tentacle. Just like nope 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 don't touch me don't touch me. <laughs> Feel the power of the puppy love. <laughs> And we we cut back into the into the school as uh, as we see uh, as we see Nightshade like come out of a somersault and slice oh, like slice uh, three tentacles that are like trying to dart through the main hallway just cut them off and they fall to the ground uh, as they just barely fail to to clutch uh, three students that are emerging uh, from from a classroom. Nice. Uh, Still, though, even though you 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 are con- containing some of the uh, some of the badness around you, um, the the tentacles seem to like continue to like emerge out of the paneling and like they they break open the roof and like come down. Uh, the the entire uh, the entire place, like the inside of the building, seems to slowly but surely like suffuse with goopy outsider stuff. Gross. As, yeah. Um, <laughs> And you you hear like uh, you hear shouting from inside the physics like uh, inside the chemistry lab. Okay, yeah, I definitely run for the the chemistry lab, fling the door open, and see who's in trouble. Yeah, so inside are like a couple of uh, a couple of students from uh, from like uh, not not from your class, uh, like a couple of your your fellow students. Um, mm-hmm. A teacher is trying to shelter them and like is fighting off a, a tentacle with like um with like a rod he was using to point at the blackboard. Like, <laughs> trying to trying to fence Is he also the, the fencing teacher just asking? <laughs> no, he's not. He's he's using it he's using it as a bat. <laughs> oh god, you awesome. tentacle. <laughs> and of course it's like of course, like Eustace, the chemistry teacher, right? He's like his hair is thin and graying, and he's wearing a sweater vest, and he's like, "Ugh, ugh, fine, yeah, I you did, vile I did really intercede and and try to defend them and uh, uh, cut down the tentacle and, and yell at them, "Get out!" Yeah. So you see, we see you like emerge into the room, uh, cutting one tentacle. A couple of more, like a thicker, nastier thing, like like dotted with little eyes and um and and a couple of snapping uh, snapping moors like emerge through a window and comes right at them and we see you like interpose yourself and and engage with this uh, uh engage with with this tentacle and we cut from the perspective of like the um i love to that the perspective of we cut to, like a a close-up of the students like huddling and and the teacher like also falling back as uh, as a a pair of heavy cast shadows on the wall uh, indicates that there is a fight going on, mm-hmm. and uh, and we we uh, cut back and we see you. Uh, you're pretty like you look torn, um, but you're you're okay. Like your your costume has been mostly torn. Your hood has been torn, but in in place of the hood, like the the torn cloth has kind of like formed a a sorrow esque mask around your head. Uh, huh. le- leaving uh, like, nice. not cast. You're no longer your head. Your head is no longer cast in shadow, uh, in this like dark, menacing hood. But instead, like it's just you with a a unpenetrable superhero mask on your face. I like it. And for just a moment, it's it's about to slip off. You have to kind of like tie it tie it uh, on there so your students don't catch a glimpse of who you are. But then, as as you turn and see that everyone is all right, uh, they look at you differently. Like you don't have enough clout as a superhero to to like have everyone be like, "Oh, that's you. You're Nightshade." The only people yeah. who would know that are like avid watchers of Channel Six, and they would say it much more hostilely, mm-hmm. uh, with much more hostility. But but these guys, like looking at you, they don't look at you with the uh, normal reaction of 
of people uh, looking at you for the first time where they're kind of like um, hesitant to, mm-hmm. to applaud what they look at. They like they look at you and seem to see this is a bad way of phrasing it, but just a superhero, right? Not like a menacing vigilante. A savior, hint, hint. Hey, hey, hint, hint. <laughs> and uh, and wait, as they wait, do say so, no more, say no more. They they pick themselves up and 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 like uh, and make for the uh, make for the uh, exit, uh, thanking you in a murmur of voices as they do so. Yeah, as soon as they get out, I'm going to like disengage this thing and try to just see if I can find anyone else and or escape since this thing is getting eaten. Yeah, you you notice that um, that like the inside of the building is still gooping over, and the, there's voices coming from different rooms where the door has gooped over, and you can like hear them like trying to pull the door open, but it's stuck. And as you look around, like you're not really you're not dressed for the occasion, right? Like your suite of powers is not perhaps ideal for this, right? Uh, but but you have like a moment where you realize that a lot of stuff is going on around you. What do you want to do? Are there a lot of chemicals in this chemistry lab? I don't know. Do you want to assess the situation? I, I do. I want to see what all in this uh, uh, chemistry lab that I could use to like absorb into myself and expulge out onto everything around me. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Let's let's see about that. So why don't you give us a role plus superior? Oh god, this is a minus one. <laughs> You can do it. Oh, so no, close. No, you couldn't. So close. <laughs> do you want to you spend? Can do it. No do you way. want to spend a team selfishly? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> so this this would mean that somehow what what winds up happening in response to this is going to is going to screw over one of your companions a little bit. Okay, I think I have an idea for this. Like, so you say I do ask, find get, chemicals no, you, in you, here. No, you get to ask me a question. Okay. So, yes, my question is, are there uh, chemicals or substances in this chemical lab that I could use? So, be- behold for a moment uh, the assess the situation move. Uh, there are five, um, okay, there are yeah, five I see questions uh, in that that you can ask me. What here can I use to defeat the tentacle in this room? Okay, okay. Um... So this is like a high school chemistry lab. I guess they're not big on gases or like they're not big on. They're definitely big on gas, but not poisons. I think that's what you. That's actually what you see. Uh, there is of of course that's what you see. There's a gas leak. Oh yes. Okay, so. No 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 no. <laughs> I I am Uh-oh. going to. Uh-oh. Yeah, start absorbing in uh, all this gas that's leaking in. How does that look? Like, uh, how do we see uh, that drawn in the comic book? Is it like, a hu- do we see like a huge purple bubble, like just swell on your person? Yeah, I think like a nightshade throws out his hands to the side and just kind of closes his eyes, and you kind of just see like this bubble start forming from his center and just kind of get bigger and bigger till like surrounds him. And then once it gets where he's you know, absorbed enough, he's just going to. It rapidly shoot it out and try to like maybe cause an explosion or something that'll hurt all the goopy stuff in here. Yeah, we see. So you can definitely try that. Let's let's have you roll to uh, unleash your powers. All right, with plus one. Yeah. <laughs> with plus one. Unleash your powers is freak, correct? Yeah. Okay. And plus one. Unleash them good. Yeah, I got hit. Yep. And, yeah, something, uh, when you unleash your powers and you roll 79, mark a condition or, uh, mark a condition or I will tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary. I have an uh, idea for how it is, uh, <laughs> I have an idea for either, so you tell me. Okay. Uh, yeah, you tell me how it's temporary or unstable. All right. So, the effect is temporary. Um, you are basically going to cause an explosion, uh, and, and in the time allotted to you by that uh, explosion, uh, you will have like a window, uh, window of opportunity to save the people who are trapped in, in, the, uh, in the classrooms. Uh-huh. Um, 
but the you're not gonna permanently hurt this thing. It'll just like retreat and then it will goop back down in in newly prepared for what you're throwing at it. Okay, yeah, that works for me. Remember, he has to also inconvenience a team member. Yes, I also have an idea I, for that. I was so, about to say maybe the explosion we like see, we see you a guys. giant we <laughs> see the giant bubble build up and we see basically like this this like. It's like this uh, the skin of poison this like uh, of poison scoop surrounding it slowly building up as it kind of sucks in gas and it emerges into the hallway and then we see you like reach down for like a matchbook that's on a table <laughs> and just yes. like strike the match and we see a picture from outside we see like the fireball erupt through the window <laughs> uh, of of the school and uh, we see like um um, we see you, uh, uh, White Sparrow, as you're like, your your tree construct is fighting off the the, the tentacle beastie and is winning. Uh, it's putting it in a, Ooh. it's basically like wrestling it very significantly. It's it's giving it the people's elbow. Um, I imagine she's <laughs> either standing on or by the tree, clearly very focused. Exactly. And as you do so, as you look on the tree, very focused, uh, you we see like in the background there's this like little flash of orange, and then a, a table careens through the air in your general direction descends on you and uh you, you you take a powerful blow oh oh let's see what does that do uh roll roll plus conditions i have no conditions oh, right. so plus just d6. roll 2d6 uh, on it and you want to roll as low as possible there we go. That's a seven, so that's average. Yeah, so um, your response to this is either you lash out verbally, provoke a teammate to foolhardy action, or take advantage of your influence to inflict the condition. You give ground, your opposition gets an opportunity, or you struggle past the pain, mark two conditions. So a, 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 burning, a burning school table hits you in the head. Uh, <laughs> And you have a you have a reaction to this as you not only like you 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 know the origin of this of, of this accident <laughs> as you see him through the open hole in the building. All right, so I could either lash out and make him guilty, or I but I think I will, uh, you know, being hit hit in the head by a table, I will give ground, and probably lose concentration on what I'm doing. All right, cool. So yeah, that that happens. So, so we see you basically. Get, Feel get free hit. to mark guilty either way, though. <laughs> yeah. You bastard! I don't know. I don't know what happened. So. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. So, what is that explosion? That is interesting. Oh fuck! That's a table. So yeah. Ow. After being love tapped by burning furniture, uh, you you find yourself incapable on of maintaining as much focus on the construct and though the power of love remains powerful and bright within the tree thing uh the the uh, tendril kicks out of the chokehold and and sweeps the leg and <laughs> starts going like starts starting through the air uh towards uh, towards the skyscraper uh, following the other supers that have recently recently left no um, no 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 and uh, we'll take our first break here um and then when we come back, we'll we'll <laughs> see what what Nightshade does, and we'll we'll join our fellows up on the skyscraper. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll we'll be right back with more masks. Uh, stick around. <laughs> 